right from the beginning, I was trying to make an urban space and I'm trying to form a space with these eight towers. That was a given. And I hadn't connected the buildings yet. So that's this idea of a sectional city, the sectional diagram, which is a hybrid building in different ways, different functions all the way down. Then after this drawing, I said, let's link all of them. Let's just link all of the eight towers. And then I saw Matisse, the dance, and I showed that to the client and, oh, they love that idea. Because it's a gigantic jump to connect these eight towers with bridges, by the way. It's not cheap. That's like one heck of a jump, a leap of faith. But they were totally behind it because I could make this analogy to something very important in the relation of the history of architecture. And when people can understand the possible meaning of it, that gives it a way of transcending all the other factors. Most modern urban development today is point towers, monofunctional, and no sense of space. The towers just come down, each one is different, each one by a different architect, and there's no collective space. Our project is just the opposite of that. The first idea is to form collective space between the elements, that, that this is hybrid building, so that it's really a chunk of a city. It's like a city within a city. The concept of micro-urbanism was central to the project from the beginning and I was thinking about where I live in Greenwich Village and how there are all these smaller shops and how can they exist in prime real estate. So we made a kind of sub-layer and down there there are much cheaper rent and there's where I get my laundry done. Right now I just took three shirts and a pair of pants down to be clean it'll be ready tomorrow. It's very unpredictable what, what can happen uh, in terms of the different programs. For example, one wine shop opened over there and another opened right next door, as if to sort of be in competition. But over here on the other side of the pond, you have internal medicine, physiotherapy, health assessment, herbal dispensing room. So I'm very excited that there's this kind of unpredictable kind of programs in life that inhabit the, the, the different layers of the project. Originally, we designed these wooden bridges to be removed, so the ponds are designed to freeze, and we envision ice skaters skating around in the middle of winter. However, these days, it doesn't get that cold anymore in Beijing, in fact. So these, these wooden bridges aren't removed during the winter, but what I like about them is that they move. So when you walk on water, it's really exciting. You can feel like you're floating. So that part of it, I wouldn't change. It's really great. Okay. <laughs> this is a mound of childhood, and uh, there are five mounds here because we had so much dirt to pull out of this excavation with four levels of parking below. We wanted to do something with the dirt and not haul it away. So there's the mound of childhood, the mound of adolescence, the mound of middle age, the mound of old age, and the mound of infinity. And in the mound of infinity, there was supposed to be a Buddhist chapel for meditation, but it's turned into a bar and a nightclub. So. Youth and old age and everything is all mixed up and reversed by the way it actually plays out. These spaces were empty because there was nobody doing the program of the old folks cafe with the chess tables and no one doing the Buddhist chapel. And they were like basically empty cavern spaces and they reprogrammed it and they call this the bamboo cord, and the other one they call the Ming, or strange feeling room. So this is where they have the kind of computers and, and, and the cafe space, and then they have this modern music, experimental music playing. It's terrific. You know, there's no, a chunk of a city, there's no way some architect is going to understand what the programs are going to be. They're going to change, they're going to evolve, like the life of a city evolves. What I think these spaces prove that space and light and form and texture and material ideas have their own energy that someone else can come and adopt to and enjoy and be excited about and it has nothing to do with the program. As this was a, an HVAC experiment, the 660 geothermal wells 100 meters deep, it wasn't known whether that they could really 
take the different temperature swings in Beijing. So we had to make a backup system. And here they are in the corner. These two chillers are only used three or maybe four days in an entire year. And Matthias Schuller, it was an ingenious design that he can cool all of these 800 apartments. He can take that couple of degrees that he needs to go down that's in addition to what's being done by the geothermal with only two chillers. That allowed us to put roof gardens on all of the tops of the buildings. And there are no chillers anywhere else in the project, just those two chillers. You know, it's like Times Square on a rainy night. There's nothing more amazing when all those lights in Times Square are being reflected on the pavement and all those colors are washing around. I mean, that's the spatiality of night. That's the primary principle that I was dealing with. So I needed that water body for the reflection of the light and I needed to under light those bridges and I needed secondary lighting and various projections and things that could dance and reflect on those horizontal water bodies and that works. So if anybody comes to see Link Tybrid, you have to see it at night. So this earthquake uh, has a very big effect on this bridge design because the weight of these bridges, especially this one with a swimming pool, is very heavy. And that means when the earthquake happens, this tower could be moving different from this tower. And you can't hook this bridge to either tower. They could go into a different shaking. So what happens is, it's rolling. Big ball bearings, huge, are in these troughs. And it rolls, either side it rolls. If these things go into earthquake pattern, this pool will act as a tomb mass snapper and go in the opposite direction. When it moves this way, the water's going to go that way. So that's why you can't tie, you can't connect a swimming pool bridge to either tower. It has to be free to slide in another pattern. It's very complicated. I mean, it's simple for an architect to say, oh yeah, let's have a bridge and put a swimming pool in it. But the engineering is not easy. Dean Nordenson did the engineering. <laughs> but it's good. I don't feel any earthquake motion right here now. <laughs>